Hello everyone, my name is Primitiva, and welcome back to this Kanto Ecosystem series, where I try and create a believable and cohesive ecosystem out of the Kanto region. If this is your first time watching, be sure to check out the last episode, as this will all be linked together, and it's important that you understand every detail. Last time, I mentioned a particular line of Pokémon that specializes in hunting small prey, and that could keep the population of Rattata under control. So which Pokémon are they? Of course, it's the Pidgeot line, the famous bird Pokémon we all know and love. And these Pokémon are basically everywhere, but is that really a surprise? But unlike their name suggests, they aren't pigeons at all. No, in fact, they're more like birds of prey, like ospreys and eagles. And like I just said, these Pokémon specialize in hunting small prey, like Magikarp, which is stated in Pidgeot's dex entry. Pidgey doesn't like to battle, and avoids confrontation if possible, using Whirlwind for defense or kicking up sand. It's a baby after all, so it's best not to get in a fight right now. Stated to only feed on bug Pokémon and hiding in tall grass, it spends its day foraging for food, such as small bugs, which I'm sure is most if not all of its diet right now. An odd detail is stated that it can return to its nest pretty easily, no matter how far away. But why does a baby like this have a nest? In our world, nests are there for offspring, but I guess Pokémon have higher sapiens than animals, so it's likely just a home. When it evolves into Pidgeotto, it also still has this nest, which it uses to carry prey to, like Execute, which it can carry for over 96 kilometers back to its nest. Its diet very much expands, flying around all day long, attacking anything that comes into its territory, and looking for small Pokémon to eat, which it can spot easily with its outstanding vision. Pidgeot is eh, basically the same, just bigger and likely feeds on a bigger variety of smaller Pokémon, like Magikarp. It's much stronger now too, having powerful chest muscles, allowing it to go Mach 2, and even bend trees with the winds it can create. It's quite a pretty bird too, having lovely colorful plumage growing on the top of its head to its back, appearing as some sort of hairstyle. And it can also spread its lovely colored wings to intimidate other predators. Oddly enough, it doesn't have any gender differences, though I feel that it should. That hair-like plumage just looks way too much like ornaments many birds have to impress females. So I definitely think there is at least some difference in nature. These Pokémon likely hunt by either eating small Pokémon right off the floor, or actually diving into other Pokémon and holding them down with their very powerful claws while going for the killing blow. I'm sure that these Pokémon have no trouble catching their prey with their intense speed and powerful talons, so I can imagine these Pokémon being pretty high up on the food chain. I mean, after all, they're fast predatory birds. Their role in the ecosystem is to basically just keep other Pokémon's populations in control like the aforementioned Radicate line I mentioned earlier, and likely other fast reproducing Pokémon as well. However, of course, it is not unbeatable. There are some Pokémon that even specialize in eating their eggs. But which ones exactly? Ekans is known to eat the eggs of bird Pokémon and swallow them whole. The Arbok line, however, isn't really found that often in the region, only appearing in a few roots and Cerulean Cave. But who's to say that these Pokémon don't just, I don't know, migrate? I mean, yeah, statistically there's less of them, but I find it hard to believe that they just stick to the same roots constantly. Ekans is the definition of an ambush predator, often found in grasslands and sneaking through it without making any sound, and then striking its prey before swallowing it whole by detaching its jaw. If it eats too much, it can become painful to move, and it can sometimes even faint when an egg gets stuck. Not sure what they mean by fainting though, do they mean passing out or just straight up death? It's not described in any of its dex entries, but it likely uses its rattle tail the same way that any rattlesnake would, which is to serve as a warning for predators not to mess with this dangerous snake. And like a snake, it smells with its tongue, and it uses this to search prey. It can even swallow its prey whole. As a newborn, it doesn't possess venom yet, but it's safe to assume that it obtains it soon enough. But its bite is still painful. Ekans curls itself into a spiral-like shape before sleeping, this allows it to quickly respond to others who could be a potential threat, allowing for a quick glare for self-defense. And naturally, the older it gets, the longer it grows. Which eventually leads us to Arvok, who is very much different when it comes to hunting prey than its baby form. It now confuses and scares the prey with the patterns on its chest. And then when they're frozen in fear, it constricts them to death. This pattern is also used for warding off other predators by widening its chest and making screeching sounds by expelling air from its mouth. Arbok would likely also sneak around as well, but not totally rely on it like Ekans. One thing that's definitely odd though is that this Pokémon changes from being a rattlesnake to a cobra, and then also a cobra that constricts, 
which they aren't known to do and instead use their powerful venom. But our box seems to use both, so yay, double the poke power, I guess. Capable of even flattening steel oil drums, I doubt any Pokemon could just easily take down this beast of a snake. Interestingly, this is one of the few Pokemon to actually show regional differences, stated to have over 20 different possible arrangements of patterns on its body. You know, the more I think about it, the odder it is that almost all Pokemon look entirely the same in all regions. So I'm glad they at least did something with Arbok, and this was even before the introduction of regional forms. I believe that these Pokemon specialize primarily in eating mammal and bird Pokemon, and sometimes even their own if they're not related, and that they hunt during the day. With Ekans basically feeding on bird Pokemon eggs, it makes sense that Arbok would, you know, double down on that and eat the actual Pokemon that lays those eggs. So I doubt that this strategy would work on spiky Pokemon, like the Sandslash line, who are based on pangolins. These Pokemon are expert burrowers. Sanchu stays on the ground as much as it can, and its body is adapted to absorb water without waste, making it a perfect Pokemon to live in dry places, which it very much prefers. If it gets cold at night, however, its height is said to be coated with dew, which probably isn't good because whenever moisture is present, it needs to lay down next to a volcano. Which seems inconvenient. I mean, it'd have to go to Cinnabar every single time. But wait a second, it can't even get there. It's an island surrounded by water. It only leaves the burrow to hunt. And its prey are bug-type Pokemon, which it catches by digging holes, or by lunging out and dragging it down below with its sharp claws. It can also, of course, turn into a ball to defend itself, along with the sand around it against predators. But turning into a ball is also its main form of transportation. This ball-like form is a very durable method of defense, being able to fall from great heights and remain unscathed. It also likes to take sand baths, so that's pretty cute to imagine, kinda like a chinchilla. They do that as well and it's super adorable. Sand Slash is, well, the same but better. Its spines are now much sharper and can inflict damage, and it's even better at burrowing than its baby form, with its claws being able to grow back within a day, and if any humans find it, they can use it for farm work. It's much more versatile when fighting back, not only using its ball-like form, but also using its claws and its speed, which can create dust clouds. Its ball-like form is also used to prevent heat strokes, and its spikes regrow every year as it's sort of shedding its skin. One thing that's cool is that it can both climb in trees but also burrow, which animals like chipmunks do, but I do think that these Pokemon are primarily burrowers. It drops into its ball-like form onto whatever preys it sees from on top of the trees, which seems like an effective way of hunting the bigger Bug-type Pokemon, and I do firmly believe that it specializes in hunting Bug-type Pokemon. These Pokemon are also social, with the adults gathering berries and climbing in trees to share with the babies waiting down below. Perhaps these Pokemon are like meerkats, living in packs together in a burrow-like system that is their home. These Pokemon take on the role of insectivorous burrowers, and I can imagine them being pretty important and common in arid environments and foresty areas. I can only think of a few arid environments in some regions, like Hoenn, Unova, and Alola, but there certainly isn't any in Kanto. Or maybe there was millions of years ago, but it's gone now, and maybe these Pokemon slowly adapted to living in foresty areas as well? I don't know, the Pokedex is weird. But surely there's at least one Pokemon who can get through this tough armor though, right? Well, yes, I have one in mind, and the answer might surprise you because I think it's Persian. Why? Well, because big cats like tigers, leopards, and lions are actually the natural predators of pangolins, so I do think that Persian has a pretty good chance. Well, at least with Sandshrew. Probably not with Sandslash, unless they work together, but yeah, Persian is pretty much a big cat. The Persian line is found, well, not too commonly mostly because they do seem to be treated as more like pets than wild animals. So a lot of them might just be domesticated, but those out in the wild are still ferocious big cats. They're nocturnal Pokemon as stated in Meowth Dex entries, hunting at night like real life cats. Meowth hunts for food, but also shiny objects, like the coin that's on its head, which I doubt is naturally occurring. It's known to fight other Pokemon who also love shiny objects, like Murkrow, who also does appear in Kanto. So like cats, instead of fighting over territory, it might just fight over shiny things, or perhaps both. It's pretty much like a cat anyway, it only hunts at night, likely feeding on smaller bird and mammal Pokemon. It can retract its claws and sneak around without making a sound, you know, typical cat stuff. It's just basically like any other feral cat you've seen wandering around before. Persian on the other hand is much more ferocious being able to tear its prey apart easily, and uses its six whiskers to sense air in the environment. So if something is around, 
it can not only use the great hearing of a cat, but also just sends your movement. Often very popular as a pet amongst rich people, this Pokemon is hard to tame, and very much feral, lashing out easily at almost anything. It's very hard to get this one to warm up to you, as it's quite prideful. These Pokemon aren't too common in the wild, but there's still enough around. And since a lot of cats in a lot of places in our world are invasive species, I have a good feeling that these Pokemon are too. I'm sure that over time, the rich people who owned a lot of Persians may have gotten sick of them and just released them into the wild, without any concern for the ecosystem. Because, you know, rich people suck. And now, well, they're probably just wrecking the ecosystem. Or maybe not that much, since Pokemon could be faster at evolving and adapting, but either way, I'm sure it's not a good thing for the environment. As a cat lover, cats are adorable. They make great pets, and they're very soft and cuddly. However, they can also be a great threat to your local wildlife. So if you can, please let your cat stay inside. But if you absolutely can't, at least buy it a brightly colored collar with a bell on it, as this can warn animals when a cat is nearby. Uh, anyway, right, Pokemon, what do they do? Uh, they hunt, of course. Their niche would be mid-sized carnivore, if anything. There are, of course, a lot of Pokemon with interesting ways of defending themselves, and one line in particular speaks out to me. Which one that'll end up being? Well, you'll have to wait until the next episode. Be sure to like this video, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Me and the YouTube algorithm really like it when you do that. Subscribe if you haven't, and hit that little bell to keep being updated whenever I post a new video. Of course, subscribe if you haven't, and be sure to hit that little bell to keep up to date. Oh, and in case you're feeling a little bit generous, I have a Patreon, which is in the description down below, which really helps me support this channel. And with that being said, I hope y'all have a good day, night, or morning, and as always, take care!